Hello and welcome to Agri History. In this episode of Agri History, we'll talk about the history and domestication of cattle. In the primordial times of the late Pleistocene and Holocene eras, there was a species called the Auroch. For centuries, this species wandered until it went extinct in 1627. Based on current genetic data, our domesticated cattle were domesticated from the Auroch, most likely. Current evidence suggests that the first domestication event occurred 10,000 years ago in the Neolithic era, in the Fertile Crescent. A second domestication event occurred 1,500 years later, in the Indus Valley, using a subspecies of Auroch. This led to a group of cattle called the Zebu. It's been hypothesized that the African cattle are separate domestication event. This is due to the similar mitochondrial DNA of the many different African breeds. Further DNA evidence suggests that the African breeds are cross were made by crossbreeding wild African aurochs and the Zebu breeds. Next, we'll talk about the many breeds found in Canada, their origins, and their domestication. First, we'll talk about the Holstein cattle. This dairy breed has its origins in the Netherlands and was likely bred 300 years before the country became Christian. This likely happened through crossbreeding of primordial Netherland cattle with primordial German cattle, thus allowing for the creation of this unique breed of cattle. The Holstein breed made its way to the United States after being purchased by a man named Winthorpe Chenry. This was due to the high milk production of that breed. The Holstein breed reached Ontario, Canada via foundation stock bought by a farmer by the name of Michael Cook in 1883. The vast majority of Holsteins in Canada can be traced back to two cattle, one dam and one sire, both of which were owned by Herman, the farmer who bought the first Holstein cows. The next breed on our list would be the Jersey breed of dairy cattle. This breed was formed within the Isle of Jersey. The first known name of this breed was called Alderney cattle, later renamed Jerseys. This breed is amongst the oldest of the cattle breeds. This breed was brought to England in the 1740s and to the United States in the 1850s. And to this day, there's still thousands of Jersey cattle on the island where the breed began. And this breed has not been bred with any other type of cattle. There are many different hypotheses on how the Jersey cattle originated. Some say this breed was bred from African cattle. This would explain why the Jersey cattle are so heat tolerant compared to some other breeds of dairy cattle. Others believe that they are bred from Indian cattle that crossed into the island of Jersey via a land bridge in ancient times. A third idea is that this breed of cattle was bred from primordial French or Swiss primordial cattle. The true origins of this breed, however, remain unknown. The Jersey breed first came to Canada in 1868 through the province of Quebec. On to the next breed of dairy cattle, the Ayrshire. The Ayrshire breed has its origins in a town in Scotland called Ayr. The first name this breed went by was called Cunninghams. The breed was then renamed Dulops and finally Ayrshire. The breed was fully made by 1786. This breed was created through crossbreeding different cattle breeds together. Exact breeds are unknown, but it is hypothesized that the likely breeds used were a mix of European and Channel Island breeds, further crossbred with native cattle found in Scotland. In 1822, the first Ayrshire cattle were sent to the US, and in the early 1800s, Scottish immigrants to Canada brought these cattle with them. Now on to the next breed of cattle, the Guernsey. 
is another dairy breed of cattle. This breed also has its origins in the UK and was bred on the island of Guernsey in the Channel Islands. It is said that these cattle were bred from a crossbreed of Brindle cattle and Fremont de Lon cattle, both having their origins in France. Guernsey breed was somewhat rebred in the United States in 1840 when they crossbred three Brindle cows, a Guernsey bull, and two Guernsey heifers together. In Canada, the first Guernseys arrived unintentionally. Guernseys were being shipped by ship to New England, but rough sailing led the sailors to drop these cattle off in Nova Scotia. Due to the docile and easygoing traits of these cattle, the people of Nova Scotia wanted these Guernsey cattle in their farms. This led to importation of Guernseys to Canada in 1891. Now on to the beef cattle breeds. We'll start with the most popular one, the Angus beef. There are three breeds of hornless cattle in the UK. These breeds are called the Aberdeen Angus, the Galloway, and the Red Polled Norfolk. Based on prehistoric carvings, it is likely that hornless cattle have existed in Scotland prior to recorded history. Some historians believe that the Aberdeen Angus breed, alongside the other Scottish breeds, were bred from Aboriginal cattle of that country, and that the current breeds we find are indigenous to the regions where they are still found. The Angus cattle breed was first introduced to Canada in 1860. The next breed on our list will be the Blonde de Aquitaine. The origin of the Blonde de Aquitaine cattle breed dates back to the 6th century and the various invasions that France fought off. Various invaders throughout history carried cattle along with them. These cattle, after the invaders were repelled, were taken in by the French. And three breeds at the very least were accrued. La June de Franquin from Germany, the blonde breeds from southwestern France, and the blonde breeds of the Iberian Peninsula were found. In 1961, the French government made a large-scale breeding program to combine these three strains together to create a brand new breed of cattle. It is through this process that this breed was bred and perfected, creating the third most popular meat cow in France. The breed, the Blonde de Aquitaine, came to Canada from France in the early 70s, near the end of the importation era of imported continental European cattle. At the time, the blonde breed in France was one of the smaller breeds in number. Now on to the next breed of cattle. We will talk about the Charolais cattle breed. This breed was made in France. The exact origins of this breed are unknown, but it's likely bred from cattle found in the area. There is a legend in France that white cattle were first noticed in the region as early as 878 AD. But by the 16th and 17th century, these white cows were well and favorably known in the French market. And so breeding was done with the white cattle to breed cattle for draft use, milk, and meat. Soon after the First World War, a young Mexican industrialist of French ancestry brought these cattle to Mexico due to their appearance and productivity. It is from this stock that the first of this breed came to the United States in 1936. The Shirley's of Canada were imported from the United States in 1956. Later cattle were directly imported from France in 1959. Now on to the next breed of cattle. The next meat breed of cattle would be the Gelbfee. This is one of the oldest German cattle breeds. This breed was first found in three districts of Bavaria. This breed was created through crossbreeding multiple local strains of cattle together, including a Celtic German land race and the Hale Brown land race. These local strains were crossbred so much they became one single breed. 
1969, the director of international marketing for Coronation Genetics, Linus Hall, imported, imported gelp-free semen for breeding purposes in 1971. In 1972, gelp-free bulls were first imported into Canada. The next breed you'll talk about is a Hereford breed. The origin of the Hereford breed has been lost over time, but the general agreement is that this breed was bred from a combination of ancient Roman British cattle and an extinct breed of Welsh cattle. This breed is named after Herefordshire, historical region for agriculture in England, where this breed was first developed. Speculations on the origins of this breed can be found in agricultural offers as long ago as the early 1600s, as well as the 1700s and the 1800s. Herefords first came to the United States in 1817, but were absorbed into the local cattle population and disappeared from their permanent identity. Herefords were first imported into Canada by William F. Stone of Guelph, Ontario. The import happened directly from England. Due to the durability, docility, and feed efficiency of this breed, as a result, the Herefords have prospered in Canada for over 150 years. Next, we'll talk about the limousine cattle. The history of limousine cattle may be as old as the European continent itself. Cave drawings, estimated to be approximately 20,000 years old, seem to depict the limousine cattle. The earliest known use of this breed of cattle was as a draft animal, field plowing, and planting. This led to an ancient breed of cattle that are durable and adaptable to many environments. In fact, although most French cattle are kept in confinement, limousine cattle spent the majority of their time outside, much to the pride of their breeders. This breed would calve outside and live in family units year-round outside in the harsh climates of that area. In the late 1800s, cattle breeders made use of many English breeds of cattle for herd improvements. In the 1930s, this breed of cow was also used for that purpose. In 1968, the Cherelee breed of cattle was introduced to Canada. Now on to the final breed we'll cover for this episode, the Simmental cattle breed. This breed of cattle dates back to the Middle Ages. Early records indicate that the Simmental cattle were the result of crossbreeding between large German cattle and smaller breeds of Swiss cattle. The Simmental cattle is in fact named after the area where it's first bred, the Sim Valley which is found in Switzerland. This breed made its first appearance in North America when a Canadian named Travis Smith imported a famous bull called Parisian from France. Simmental semen was introduced in the same year in the United States allowing for the first half-blood Simmental calf to be born in February 1968. Well, that covers our video on cattle. Next episode, we'll talk about chickens. See you then.